hey welcome back to another video in today's video we're going to be setting up the checkpoint system or a portion of it in a way we're going to set up the point that allows the checkpoint to be visible and then it disappears after it's been cleared so that only one checkpoint is visible in the scene at a time instead of having them all be visible at once so with that said let's get into it before we get started though i did notice a problem with the barriers in that they don't do their job you can just drive through them so what we're gonna do is in the scene right click and then place x and then you go and place a blocking volume and then you choose a box volume and then you get a little box here and then you can just scale it move it and rotate it and until it's over the barrier over here it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be over the barriers to prevent the vehicle then from just driving through the barriers uh, now with the blocking volumes all in place it should and prevent the vehicle from just falling off the edge and then for organizing purposes come over to the outliner and then select all of the blocking volumes that were added and then click on the folder with a plus to create a new folder for them and then click on the new folder and then just rename this to blocking volumes as this is just to make things look a little bit neater and now with that done let's get into today's video so we're going to open up the BP checkpoint because this is what we're going to be doing our work today. Uh, in the viewpoint, we're going to be adding a couple of things. First, we're going to add a new scene component. And we're going to just rename this to root and then drag and drop it over the default one. This is just so that when we add the checkpoint, we don't have that sphere get this plane in the scene you just have like a clean looking root and then from there we're gonna open we're gonna add a new component again we're gonna add an arrow the arrow will be used to determine the direction that the player needs to be moving in in order to clear the checkpoint so that you can only clear from one side instead of from any side okay, let's remove this properly arrow And then we're going to add a, another component. We're going to add a box collision. The box collision will, add, will act as the trigger for the code so that the next checkpoint can then be spawned in once the previous one has been cleared. And then the final one we're going to add is a static mesh. The static mesh will be the visual representation of where the checkpoint is so that we can hide the box collision and only have the static mesh shown now i got my static mesh from blender it's a simple torus mesh that i exported and then imported into thingy into unreal so we're gonna do that now we're gonna import the mesh so we're going to create a new folder, we're going to call this one drain. We're going to open it and then we're going to import. And then when you import it, make sure to unclick generate missing collision. Because if you don't leave, if you don't uncheck this, you won't be able to pass through the tour. It's going to generate a collision that will prevent the player then from passing through you can click on generate nanite if you so please and then from there you just port off and if you if you happen to not um, click on uncheck the generate overlap you can open up the mesh and just dot it over here for temporarily and then over here by collision you just click there and then you, you will click on a part that says delete selected collision you can also add a particle system if you want to i couldn't add a particle system because 
my laptop doesn't have enough space. But the process that I was going through, it can be used also with the particle system. So instead of adding a static mesh, we'll come over here and we'll add a Niagara particle system. And just close those particles temporarily. And then when you click on it, you will then go over and create your particle system over here by Niagara system. If you do create one into one two, uh, I would suggest you go to copy existing system and then, oh, okay, okay, I have it. Okay, before that, I'm just gonna be, gonna need to enable the Niagara system, the Niagara fluids system. And obviously we're gonna have to restart the system. We start Unreal Engine, uh, save selected. Now with Unreal restarted and Niagara enabled, you can then go by the Niagara system, go to copy existing and then next. And then the ones I suggest, if you do have the space would be the Grid 3D Gas Colored Smoke because it's already uh, in a cylindrical form. So it's already like round. And then the other one would be the Grid 3D gas particles. It's also round, but the one is this one is pure particles and the other one is smoke. They're both quite colorful. And then once you have then selected the particle system that you want and make the adjustments, the appropriate adjustments in the particle and you've added particle component. Down here by the Niagara, you will then select the particle system over here so pop here and then you select it and then it will be spawned into the scene over here but as i said i don't have the memory for that so i'll be removing that and then i will be using my static mesh for the purpose of the video let's move on to the code okay so for the code we can just remove everything here we're not going to need any of that we are going to add a new variable called next checkpoint Yo. this will be a integer and that will be everything that will be all the variables and then we're going to add in an event dispatcher and this one will be called checkpoint cleared and then this will be used to let the other blueprints know when the checkpoint is completed and they should then do the, the follow-up piece of code. Now with all that done, I'm gonna select the trigger and then right click and then gonna add, go to add of rim and then we're gonna select the add on component and overlap. Now, the reason why this one is gonna is so that it, the checkpoint will only be recognized as cleared once the player has passed through. So once the furthest point of the player of the vehicle has passed through the box collision, then only will it be considered as checkpoint cleared. So from there, we are going to say, go from the other actor and then we're gonna say cost to, uh, no, oh, wield vehicle point. Ah, one thing I forgot to do in the viewport, select the trigger and then down by the settings under the collision, it says collision presets. We're gonna change it from overlap all dynamic to overlap, overlap only pawn. So then this will allow only pawns to, to trigger the box collision instead of just any anything It'll only allow for points to then make it so that the checkpoint has been cleared and then from here we are then going to drag off an execution pin and then add a branch node and then we're going to need to add a condition to tell the code when the checkpoint has been cleared. So for that, we are going to need the arrow. Just try to drop that in here. 
This will then be used to make sure that the vehicle or the player is traveling in that direction, in the same direction as the arrow so that you, the checkpoint can only be cleared from one direction. And then from the arrow, we're gonna drag off and select and get the arrow's world rotation. And then from the cost to wield vehicle pawn, we're gonna drag off and get the vehicles and get the velocity. Now we could get the rotation, but we need to ensure that the vehicle is traveling in a given direction and not just just standing there and doing nothing. It needs to actually be moving. And then from the get world rotation of the arrow, we're gonna drag off and say get rotation x vector so that the we can get the vector of the arrow. And then from the get velocity of the vehicle, we're gonna drag off and search for a dot product. Now the dot product takes two vectors as we have here and then outputs a float value, which is what we're gonna need because we need to ensure that the X rotation of the arrow and the velocity of the vehicle is a numerical value that we can then judge as greater than, lesser than, or equal to what we require it to be. So they can be judged as positive or negative. So the checkpoint can then be cleared. And then from the dot product, we're gonna drag off and then select greater than. And then this will then be the condition so that if the velocity of the vehicle and the direction of the arrow are both positive, then we can then say that the checkpoint is has been cleared. Now we're not gonna do anything with the false because we don't need anything for the false. We're just gonna go from the true. So once these two conditions have been met, we then gonna call our checkpoint cleared. Okay, I forgot by the checkpoint cleared, I needed to insert. I'll just rename this real quick. I forgot to insert one an, an input. So we're gonna create a new input. This is going to be integer input, and we're gonna rename this to next checkpoint. And I'm just gonna compile. Huh, that didn't work. Oh, don't worry, name itself. Add that in there. Oh, no. Sorry. Guess it changes itself. Just from the true, I'm gonna call checkpoint cleared. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I need to delete it and then re and then add it again and over. And I'm trying to add that in there. Then so that this, once the checkpoint has been cleared, it will then tell the other relevant blueprints that we're gonna be doing later on that it needs to add the next checkpoint in the queue. And then we're gonna drag in the ring and the trigger. This is close to the end of the video, we're almost done. From the ring, we're gonna set set hidden in game, so that once the checkpoint is cleared, it will then hide the ring. And then from the trigger, we'll then set generate overlap because we're not gonna do it for the ring because the box collision, the trigger is the one that will be used to determine whether or not the checkpoint is supposed to be cleared. The ring is just the visual representation of where the checkpoint is. And just gonna make this look like a meter. I will be adding a meter. And with that, the coding is done. That's all we need to do. Just add a comment and say, check if checkpoint has been cleared and compile this 
save and with that the code is done now we're just gonna test it out see if it actually works so from yeah we're just gonna select the checkpoint blueprint and just drag it into the scene and then we're gonna check where the arrow is which direction the arrow is facing oh seems like i made a mistake okay so while i was fixing the uh, trigger and ring because the rotations were wrong i ran into a problem with the box collision in that there was still the vehicle would still be affected to some degree so over one click on if you, if you run into the same problem that i did click on the box collision and then down by the collision set it back to default of overlap all dynamic this this should solve the problem uh let me just let me just show what problem it is that i ran into if you overlap only porn and then just compile and save this so that's the problem that i ran into as you can see there is still some form of collision there but if i say overlap all dynamic and then compile and save and then I no longer have that problem but as you can see the checkpoint is cleared it's no longer visible it is gone as the code so the code works so let's just see if the vehicle goes in a direction that it's not supposed to be say perhaps backwards and it's still get cleared and then to see if it works so that the vehicle can only clear from one side from one direction instead of all of them I'm gonna go backwards through it and as you can see the checkpoint is still there and then once we go through it that way it's gone so the code works everything is fine uh, like I said if you have the same problem that I have with the overlap only porn just change this back to overlap all dynamic and then it should be fixed and then if you also have a print on air where your rotations were bit off, you can just come and fix them. And then also there was the problem with the ring and the trigger being scaled as one. If you also have that, and it looks like mine did here, where the ring seems to be a child of the trigger, just grab the ring and then overlap it with the arrow so that it becomes a child of the arrow as both the ring and the trigger should be children of the arrow the same way the arrow is the child of the route the only route the route so with that uh, the code is done we're done with today's setup for the checkpoint system and and uh, until the next video